If you wish to use Carveco in a more traditional, artistic manner, then you can do so by using the various sculpting tools within the software. If you select the Smooth Sculpting icon from the bottom left toolbar, this will smooth the relief. There's also Smudge, which pushes material, Deposit, which adds material, Carve and Raise, which will both remove material, and finally, Multiply, which will copy an area. These can also be selected by using the numbers 1 to 6 on the keyboard whilst the tool is open. All of the tools have more or less the same settings with slight variations depending on the tool being used. The radius will affect the size of the sculpting tool. If you hover over a relief, you will see a shadow which will show the size of the tool selected. When increased, notice how the shadow becomes larger. This gives you an indication of the area of the relief to be modified. The strength setting is similar to how much pressure is applied when drawing with a pencil. The lower the value, the less that the relief will be affected. Here you can see a low strength smoothing, which is only slightly modifying the relief. Smoothness affects the drop off from the tool. A smoothness of 1% will give it a sharp 90 degree edge, whereas a 100% smoothness will have a gradual drop to give a nicer blend when sculpting. I'll explain the behaviour section in a moment, as I will need to switch to the deposit tool so you can see what is happening. Moving on to the mask section, you can specify a colour to use as either the colour that you would like to sculpt or to not sculpt. A material safety plane can also be specified if you do not wish to sculpt below a certain height. This is useful if you are, let's say, smoothing and you do not wish to roll onto the zero plane. Here you can see that I've set the material safety plane to one millimeter and it's now not rolling over as it was previously. Below, there is a section called Sculpting Session. This allows you to take a snapshot in time of your work and then you can go back to that moment in time by using the revert option. Here you can see that I've clicked snapshot and then started going crazy with the sculpting tool. I may think to myself that this doesn't look very good and I want to go back. So I can go back to the snapshot I took by selecting revert. Undo also works, so I can, if I wanted to, undo and then go back beyond the snapshot. Switching to deposit, the behavior has a mode area with three options. Normal is standard behavior, and it will just keep on adding material when sculpting. There is also limit and stamp. Limit will allow you to specify a thickness which will act as a Z stop, so it won't go any higher than that limit specified in Z. So here you can see that I can only deposit at one millimeter high. There is also stamp, which will allow a stamp interval to be added, which will in effect stamp the deposit tool down every time I move 10 millimeters. Changing the distance to five millimeter decreases the intervals where the deposit is stamped. A scatter distance can also be added, which will randomize the deposits. The stamp mode needs to be turned off for this. The lazy brush option will create a lag of whatever size you type in and blend any moves that you do in smooth transitions. This is good to cut out judders when sculpting. The mirror X and mirror Y will create a mirror of whatever is being sculpted in the X or Y. Finally, an important option when using the erase tool, under behavior, 
This is set to snapshot by default. If you have just started sculpting, it will seem as though the arrays is not actually doing anything. This needs to be set to arrays to base plane. Also, a useful tip, if you hold down control on the keyboard whilst arising, it will have the opposite effect and start bringing material back when you click on the area that was erased.